and welcome back. For those just joining in, I'm Ari Kaplan, and I'm here with Holly and Matei. Um, so welcome. We have over 50, 55,000 people from all over the world, 140 countries. Wow. Um, so we see you, we love you, we appreciate you, and very excited to have you. If you were here for the pre-show, they're like, you asked, what am I most excited about? And I'm like, this segment. This moment right it's, now. It's Matei, <laughs> and we have tons of practitioners, and you're, you're great. So, uh, say hello and what you do here. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, you know, great to be here. I'm co-founder and CTO of Databricks, working on um, you know a whole bunch of things throughout the platform. But lately, also a lot of uh, Unity catalog and AI stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, what does your organization do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm basically I work with the product and and uh, R and D org to actually build the Databricks product. A lot of what our co-founders do is, uh, you know, make sure that everything uh, fits together and is is designed in a comprehensive way. Because the whole premise of our our platform, our product strategy, is a unified platform uh, for everything you do with data and machine learning. So that requires you know, designing everything so that uh, it really can fit together and interoperate and remove those sources of friction you tend to have uh, with, uh, with very different systems. Mm, so you focus on a huge amount of areas of the Databricks platform mm -hmm. and lots of other things as well, which is incredibly impressive. But I think one of the things you've really been kind of like banging the drum on mm -hmm. is governance for many, yeah. many years mm -hmm. now. And I think maybe was it three, four years ago, Unity Catalog was Yeah, announced? four years ago we announced it. That's yeah, yeah, so and we've got four uh -huh. years of development of yeah. all of the things that have gone on, what are you most proud that you've been able to either do from a technical perspective or from a customer mm -hmm. enablement perspective? Yeah, well, I'm excited about you know, customers, uh, uh, basically uh, the majority of our customers, 97% are now on Unity Catalog. We introduced this new governance model. Um, you know, it's, it's different, it's hard to migrate a governance model. We thought that it's a great one because um, it has a uniform way to think about like files in your data lake, tables, um, machine learning models, models, dashboards, all that stuff. So we thought it's a great one, but it's still a lift to, uh, you know, to, to move people over. Uh, so it's great to see it actually adopted, and that required a lot of work from our engineering teams and field teams, um, and, um, you know, and it's, it's paying off. People are getting a lot of benefits out of it. Yeah, and I, oh, sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, you uh, de debuted Unity Catalog, and last yeah. year we had uh, probably one of the keynote moments of the whole conference was you pushing this button open oh, to open source. What yeah. was that like to like? Yeah, it, it was happen? great. Yeah, yeah. We we always you know we knew since we began it we actually were discussing like hey should we make it open source from the beginning and we we thought you know we, we want to get experience with it and iterate with our customers make sure it's a great design because you know once it's an open source it's it's hard to like really change the fundamentals of how it works uh, so we were excited to bring it to that point and open source it and the the reason it matters is like the objective here is to really help you simplify governance across your company it needs to be unified and we believe it can't be unified unless it's uh, it's open it's got open APIs because everyone has so many different platforms and systems, legacy ones, you know, new startups coming out. Um, so uh, it, it needs to have open standard API so they can work with that. So it's something that's kind of fundamental to Databricks culture is being able to kind of open source things, mm -hmm. not just Unity Catalog, but we've, all, we've had loads of announcements from this yeah. week. We had an open source summit on Monday. I, first of all, I'm very glad that this kind of culture of open source has stayed with the company. That doesn't necessarily stay with companies. Like, why do you think it's so mm -hmm. um, ingrained in Databricks culture? Like, why has mm -hmm. it stayed with it compared to other companies that kind of start and then it maybe doesn't? Yeah, I mean, I think part of it is we, you know, we always knew when, when we started the company, we, we saw that there are these, uh, these kind of trends that are changing the way, you know, enterprise computing and data management is done. So one of the trends was open source. We knew it's, it's here, it's a very powerful force, it's going to be here. So we should learn how to, you know, work with it as a, as a company and, uh, you know, get all the benefits of it because it's not going away as a, you know, as a movement and as a way to do collaborative development. And then the other part was the cloud and the interesting thing about the cloud, the thing that actually enabled the whole like unified platform um, approach and, and things like Lakebase that we're launching is in the cloud, all your storage, all your, you know, all the data you, you had in these like siloed systems before, it's all bits sitting on the same hard drives and like Amazon S3 or whatever, like you don't even know where in the data center you are, like your, um, you know, your database table for your online database and your machine learning model and your analytics 
terabytes might all be on the same hard drive. You, you don't even know. And there's a super fast network. So in the cloud, it makes a lot of sense to have uh, open interfaces and to be able to connect you know, any engine to any data and work with it in a way that didn't make sense on premise. And um, you, you know, as I said, the, the, the basically, Enterprises understand the value of open, they're designing their architectures around it. Uh, we also think you can't have something like truly unified and, and useful without that. So that's why um, you know, we, we've been doubling down on it. Yeah, so one, one thing I, I love hearing, we all love open source. The practitioners out there, mm -hmm. if they could talk to you, they'd say thank you, Matei, thank you. But you're, you're uh, open source, everything, you know, starting with Spark, mm -hmm. Unity Catalog, MLflow, uh, Delta, everything, you know, billions of downloads. Mm -hmm. For you, like, uh, what does it feel like to have mm -hmm. such a huge impact on society? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we definitely, you know, we didn't expect any of these projects to, to grow so much, so it's been really awesome. I think we had a great team, and we had, you know, the right thing at the right time, and then we learned a lot from early users. So it's awesome to, you know, to to be able to contribute to this and help so many folks be productive. Just uh, even, you know, the people using things like Spark outside Databricks, they've done so many cool things with them, and, and seeing what our customers do is really great. Could I ask you a, a bold question, and you don't okay. have to answer this? Uh, <laughs> Open source applications of technologies that you've been involved in that aren't used at Databricks. Mm -hmm. What do you look at and think, oh, that's really interesting, or that's really novel? Hmm. That's not used at Databricks. <laughs> Um, it's happening it's in the open hard source to community. tell because we use so so many things, right? Like, because I mean, we do front end development, back end development, machine learning, and so on. Um, I think some of the, I mean, one thing we're not doing is a lot of this like edge stuff, like the Raspberry mm. Pi and robotics and stuff. But when I see how creative people get with that, that's really cool to see. So you know, I you know, I, I wish I had time to like do some <laughs> things with that at home. Yeah. But yeah, getting you know, computing and AI into the physical world, I think will be really interesting. You must have an abundance of free time. <laughs> How often do you travel? Um, I, I mean, I travel pretty regularly, although I don't spend like most of my time traveling because I also spend a lot of time just working with our teams to build things. But uh, yeah, definitely some. Uh, it varies from time to time, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. and so uh, you must have been very busy this week, not just kind of speaking uh -huh. about things, but also talking to customers as well. Yeah. Of the stories that you've heard from people and the way that they're using Databricks, what have yeah. been the kind of trends and themes you've heard from people? Yeah, I mean, I think one um, really exciting trend is, is actually just the interest in lake-based. The number of customers who say they're already, you know, they, they're doing a lot of work to try to, to publish like data from the lake house as soon as it's computed uh, into operational apps is really interesting. One customer told me they have a internal name for it that I thought was great, which is Lakeshore. Oh, I thought, like, <laughs> can we steal that name? I, I don't think we can, but, you know, it, it, it's such a common thing that they gave it a name. So the excitement around that was great, and as we announced it, we just discovered so many use cases. Um, I think the other one is, you know, I always, uh, I'm, I'm spending a lot of time with our AI team also, and our AI research team to figure out, you know, how to make it like easier to build really high quality AI and um, people's feedback on uh, you know how important evaluation is for AI and the ways they're doing it and uh, you know the ways they're plugging that into Databricks with our agent eval framework is is also um, great to see and you know we want to provide the best support for that because we think it's the key to make agents better. Yeah. So you, but sorry, you mentioned kind of lake base. Yeah. Can right. you talk about Neon at all and kind of like what it was that you liked about their technology? Yeah. I mean, first of all, Neon is a fantastic product and we're continuing to run the product on its own. Neon, um, you know, came in at sort of the software engineer end of you know, database users. You're building an app, you want a database, you want to be able to do modern development practices around that, like CI, CD, you know, branching, forking, um, and you want it to be serverless and, and you know, pay as you go. So they, they made that super easy, and it's great for that. Lakebase, we actually started at the analytics end, because those are you know, most of our users. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's, it's going to be very interesting to start from both ends. The Neon product had been Growing extremely fast, um, you know. Like for example, some of my um, uh, past PhD students have startups, and they were using Neon, and they told me it's such a good move because we love this. This is, you know, our favorite like infrastructure provider. Um, so very high quality product, uh, great team, um, great roots in um, in in the Postgres community. They have a, a lot of the Postgres committers that work on, and and they've been contributing things and. 
adapting Postgres so that it can work better in this modern sort of serverless and cloud um, uh, uh, sort of uh, stage that we're in. So um, yeah, so these are the things that we liked. And I think they'll bring great product sense across, you know, mu much more than lake base, just across a lot of areas of Databricks to reach these apps. Yeah, I love, like with the Neon, one of the, the things we learned is mm -hmm. just how many like AI are, are creating yeah. databases yeah. now. So what are your thoughts on like AI creating things and maybe like ethically yeah. and uh, effectively? Yeah, well, I mean, the, the reason that, there's, uh, there's two reasons. One is, you know, you got like AI agents that need memory and you need to set it up. But the other reason is because of AI-based development and, and testing tools. And the, the interesting thing is, you know, today like LLMs, they're not perfect, but they can can do a lot of useful tasks. And if you have, if your development environment, your code and your database are something where you can easily, you know, generate a new version and test it and so on, some of these tools uh, do that. And basically that's what's driving a lot of usage and a lot of pressure on development environments to be, um, uh, you know, scriptable and, and forkable uh, very fast and testable very fast. So uh, it seems like the, the use of that for development is only increasing and people are, you know, much more productive. Like you, you ask the AI uh, assistant, you know, code something, it tries a lot of stuff, maybe in parallel, it shows you what works, you give it feedback. Um, so that's great to see. And in fact, we're seeing that workflow also with uh, with Genie Deep Research, where it's a, it's a similar thing. You tell it to explore something, it does a whole bunch of queries in parallel and it summarizes the results. Um, now, of course, you've got to be careful as a developer using AI, you have to review the code, but you know, people are learning. It's not it's not that fundamentally different from like when you did a web search and copied stuff off of Stack Overflow. You know, the same kind of issues would could happen where you, you copied in the wrong thing. Um, uh, but uh, it is, you know, I think it's a it it really does speed up development and prototyping. Yeah, absolutely. And so I, I hate to do it, but I'm going to do that annoying interviewer thing. I know you've spent a lot of time, you know, working with Neon, getting that over the line. Uh -huh. And now I'm going to ask, what's next for Lakebase? What's next for Lakebase? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, the, first of all, like, we're very excited to just ship it in public preview. It's been in private preview with hundreds of customers already. It's one of our largest private previews, and it, it's been great to see. But we're very curious to see what everyone else does with it. Um, we've got a bunch of new functionality coming. Um, so you know the, the the way that it syncs with uh, with uh, with your lake house tables um, that's you know going to be even even faster and smoother and some of the development features that neon really excels at we are um, you know pushing into lake base um, and I'm really excited in the long term uh, of having everything else that's on databricks available there like unity catalog governance um, ml you know can you call your machine learning models from lake base metrics all these things so plenty of room to explore we're just you know we're the, the Neon team, the acquisition officially closed like a few days ago. The yes. team's been in the office, getting ready, having discussions, uh, uh, and it's it's really awesome to, to, to see all the, the potential ways to make it better. Okay then, so I think we've only got uh, one minute left. Is there any one message that you wanted to leave with mm. our audience? What would it be today? Yeah, I mean, I think overall, um, you know, we're, we're excited you're all here. We, we think it's still early days in terms of data and AI infrastructure. Uh, what is happening in the market today is just too complex, more than it needs to be. And, um, you know, we our hypothesis has been you can have a unified platform, you can have unified governance, which is already paying a lot of dividends for our customers by making that simpler, but also unified sort of storage and compute layers, the way you can now take a table in Databricks ingest right directly into it with zero bus. So it, it's also sort of a message bus. You can then serve it through lake base or vector search. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot of interesting technical work to do to, to make this one copy of the data reality. Um, well, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate you've been very busy this week. We really, really appreciate it.